space bears have captured people's imagination. Now it's finally time for them to be accessible to everyone in a scale they've never been before. Tabletop Time is launching a big Space Bears Kickstarter and we want to show off one of our favorite models from that collection, the Space Bear riding Space Bears on Bears. Bear Cavalry. And we got reached out to by Apex Maker, which is a brand new 3D printer, and they wanted us to showcase their printer, and they've sent us one for review. And what better way to test it out than on our very own brand new products? So let's get to it. It's tabletop time. I'm Dave. There's also Murray and Jen in this video. So for those who've been following along at home, Jazz's creation, the Space Bears, have gone on to find their own legs and grow into something unique. There's a Kickstarter launching, pushing them into their own range of creations. And there's a whole bunch of really cool models coming that are unlike anything you've seen before. And today we're gonna be painting a really cool example of that, which is these armored warriors on massive bear cavalry, wielding daggers stylized after traditional Ojibwe nation blades and holding up their gorgeous circular shields covered in patterns, the Space Bear Cavalry, which I love to call the Polar Express, will be charging onto a 3D print bed soon for you too. And today I used the fully pre-supported models, set them up on the Apex Maker and got to printing. Printing one of every compatible part to allow Jen to choose whichever parts she wanted to make the coolest model she could. So I've just taken the prints off of the Apex printer and they're looking pretty good. I've washed them up in the ISO, so all I need to do now is cure them and we can have a look at what we've got. There's a lot of detail in here and the supports came off super easy. The only downside, however, is the print head is quite heavy and quite large. So it is a little bit cumbersome to fiddle around with, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna throw these guys in the cura and then we're gonna have a look and see how the final prints turned out. the Space Bears infantry arms are compatible with each other. So for this particular build, I chose a shield and a dagger in his other hand. And here he is, all sprayed up. Uh, I've done a very light zenithal on him uh, just to kind of establish some of those raised areas. It's a really epic pose. I've tried to put him in as well with the knife and shield. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this up and you can follow along with the process. So we've handled a fair amount of 3D printing at the studio. We've got multiple 3D printers. And one thing I've noticed is that by bad luck or design, the large 3D printers we've used have always been more difficult to maintain, more prone to failure, and more annoying to work with than the smaller ones. So when Apex reached out wanting us to do a review for their printer, Curiosity had to say yes. Why? This printer is taking off. The Apex Maker X1 is on Kickstarter and has currently raised over $1.5 million. So what's all the fuss about? Well, I'm going to give you the two main points. It's huge and it's fast. The Apex Maker has a 16 inch 8K LCD, which is the largest 3D printer LCD currently available on the market. This massive screen gives it a huge print bed and a vertical height of up to 40 centimeters for prints. It can also print of speeds up to 180 millimeters an hour. Even on regular settings, this printer is throwing down one second layer times. And I found the larger the print bed, usually the slower the print time. So to have one this fast on a printer this big is is impressive. Our Space Bear Cavalry is large for a mini, but not large compared to this printer. So to test the capacity, I've just run a print to see how well it handles a larger model. Two of these quite large models printed perfectly and in a single print. There's no errors, they're looking lovely, and I'm really impressed with it. Ta-da! Another feature I do like about the Apex is the resin vat heating, which keeps the resin at a more optimal print temperature to reduce the chance of failure. There are also a host of other features, including a built-in camera and air purifier to monitor the print as it runs, resin autofill to keep your prints running, and power loss resume. The power loss resume function is actually really cool, so it means losing power won't ruin your print, and you can resume from wherever you left off. It's worth noting we of course received a prototype printer for our review, so keep that in mind as I get to some of the less favorable points. The printer is boasted to come with a pre-calibrated build plate to ensure no manual leveling is required. Let me show you a time-lapse of our very first print. 
So after that, Murray immediately had to manually re-level the bed after the first print failed to print anything. After he did that, however, it was mostly effective. I don't want to be too harsh here. I couldn't name a printer that doesn't have some level of failure rate and the remainder of our prints with the machine were completely fine. Slicing for the printer is done through Chi2 Box and Lychee, so no proprietary software, which means community bug fixing will roll out really quickly and optimize the print's usability into the future. And this is a good thing. However, the largest issue I have with this printer is actually its main selling point. It's its size. It required three liters of resin in the vat to even commence printing. The FEP even began to sag downwards from the weight of the resin as I transferred it to be poured out, making me crazy nervous. The lack of spout lip on the massive vat meant that pouring from the vat was super awkward as well. Even handling the resin coated build plate is difficult. Its weight and size make everything more complicated than a smaller machine would. And a minor note, I really hope to see finesse before the production version include some translation issues in the interface. These leave you sometimes guessing as to whether you're pressing the right button, which is never a good thing. For me and for this review, the biggest strengths of the printer are the biggest weaknesses. Much like all printers, it isn't for everyone. Be wary that its size is a drawback if you don't need the size. However, if you are looking for a huge print bed to make some massively wild prints, or if you produce huge numbers of quantities and need to be able to do them really quickly, then the Apex Max is definitely the best large based printer I've ever used. But with all that said, it's time to get back to the meat and potatoes, which is space bears. Let's see how Murray paints up that space bear. Keeping in theme with the overall look of space bears, I went ahead and added on some cork board and some texture paste to bring it all together. And with the building part done, it was time to hand this off to Murray to see what he could do. Now I decided to paint this bear a really strong brown color, as classic a brown bear as we could possibly manage. So after Jen had primed the model and also based it, I set about using a bunch of aerosols to give it a really nice brown luster. And this will be the foundation to paint all of the fur, the leathers, and even the brown rocks below. So to start off, I'm gonna bring out all the definition and use a strong brown contrast paint on all of the fur areas. Not being too worried to spill over onto the other areas, as long as it helps to established a strong line of separation between all the materials. After that, I'm gonna grab my first brown highlight color and start working in patches, working my way down the fur, creating a mottled, almost camouflage-like pattern. What I'm really trying to do here is work on all the areas that I think the light would catch, as if I was actually painting the muscles on the bear, as the hair will conform to the same shapes and hopefully the same sort of level of light. You'll have to bear with me. This will make more sense as I make more progress. As I move into each successive highlight color, just as you would with any highlighting, I'll work in progressively small areas and layers, allowing the previous colors to better blend in. And just as you would with any human face, I'm gonna spend extra time making sure that I'm really happy with the bear's head. see from how I'm painting this, this isn't the usual way that most people paint fur on miniatures. It's usually a lot of dry brushing and washes, and I started with a wash, but now I'm painting in a very different artistic style, which is really to replicate the way that light hits hair or fur. You can see almost in this shot here, you can see where the light penetrates and but also reflects off some of my hair, as ridiculous as it appears. That's what I want to emulate here, that sort of sheen as the light goes down the flanks of our powerful and mighty bear. And I just want to try and capture that. So I'm doing this a little bit differently, still taking advantage of the really cool sculpt of all the fur. This is something I personally really love to learn to do in Blender and such. But until then, I'm just gonna have fun painting it. So let's do the final steps and then we'll move on to painting the warrior atop. To start off the rider, I'm gonna paint all of the leathers and any furs that are on him. And I've decided I'm gonna paint more of an arctic pelt around his shoulders. As we've gone for the healthy brown of the living bear underneath him, it makes sense to do something different around his shoulders. So I'll mix up a light blue gray and apply that, highlighting nearly all the way up to a white. After that, I'm gonna start building up all the red areas, starting in the most classical locations for space bears, namely the big shoulder pauldrons. And then I'll start adding more and more until I I feel that there's enough red on the miniature. I didn't feel like I wanted to paint the entire greave red, so I did a sequence of sharp triangles there instead. With that done, it's time to start base coating all of the metals, namely all the gold chains, gold trim, and any silver weapons. Now, even though I've used a lot of washes and contrasts, and this model is gonna get covered in streak and grime, I still want to highlight some really good areas 
surface that the light would fall upon. This will add a lot of detail, texture, and overall still shine through underneath all the streak and grime. So I'll mix together a darker blue gray and start highlighting all the black armor panels. Then it's simply a matter of highlighting all the straps around the model, making sure not to highlight them too harshly as we want to keep focal points in certain areas. Then I'll apply a wash over all the metal areas just to tone them down a little bit before the streak and grime. This is more to give them a bit of extra color than to actually shade them. I'll go in and paint the eyes of both the bear and the space bear. Now at this point, some of you might be wondering how I'm deciding what colors to put where on the model. And the easy answer to that is to keep it as close as possible to Jazz's original paint jobs. All right, it's time for that time. It's streaking grime time. Grime time. Let's go. Yes, it is that time, that dirty, smelly, yucky time, in which we use special enamel paints to shade our miniature, giving it that grim, dark aesthetic that everyone so desperately wants and perfectly suits our space bears. The first step is to varnish the model and allow that to dry completely. Then when that's done, I'm going to apply the streak and grime through a cheap airbrush and make sure I do so in a well-ventilated area, namely outside in this case. The trick here is to get a nice, heavy, even coat over the entire model, but don't let it build up too much. You don't want it dripping and sliding down, creating drip underneath the model. Once that's done, I'll let that dry for about 10 minutes before I take it inside. Okay, now for the magical part. I'm gonna apply some white spirits with the old woolly dobber, and I'm gonna start peeling away the streak and grime from the top of the model, giving that really cool weathered shaded appearance. I'll go lightly over himself, but any fur areas and the bear, I will go very heavily trying to remove pretty much as much streak and grime as I can. As these aren't dark metal oily areas, they're living creatures. Now when I'm happy with how much grime I've removed, it's time to let that sit back and dry as well. To further texture our base, I'm gonna use a variety of tufts. This will give some much needed vibrancy to the model, but also accentuate just how dirty the space bear is. Now the best way to apply snow effects is to go really heavily on all top surfaces. As you can imagine, snow drifting down, it's not gonna be on the sides or in underhangs. So you can go more lightly until you reach the ground, at which point you start covering it again, making sure to leave lots of tiny little clumps throughout the tufts. That really helps with the realistic aesthetic. When it comes to putting snow on the figure itself, you need to think about how much movement is happening in that particular area. On the back of the saddle and the pouches, there's gonna be not a lot of movement there, so I'll apply a lot of snow here. But when it comes to the arms of the space bear and the actual bear, I'm not gonna put as much snow on their limbs as they'll be moving around a lot. So a lot of the snow will of course fall off. Just something to keep in mind when you're applying effects like this. So I hope you're hyped to see these space bears and it's time we announce it when they're going to be available. Well, the Kickstarter is launching November first because Jazzo was super excited by the pun November. Even though October and December also had the same pun, it's November. There'll be massive discounts available on the collection by backing at the Kickstarter stage, as well as cool to be announced stretch goals once the Kickstarter goes live. If you'd like to get updates and be there the moment it goes up for those early bird offers, make sure to click the link in the description and click notify me and follow the campaign. We already have over a thousand people following, which is super amazing, and I'd love to see that number get even higher. So let us know what you're most hyped for for Space Bears while I give you a hint. Yes, that's right. Koalas are falling from the sky. That's that's right, drop bears are coming and we're gonna be doing a video on them next week. So stay tuned for that. But with that out of the way, it's time we see the reveals of Murray's beautiful model. So play me out, Johnny. Thank you so much to all of our patrons who support us in making these videos. We couldn't do it without you. We put out two videos a week for your viewing entertainment and that volume of content is only sustainable thanks to the generous support of our backers on Patreon. If you'd like to consider joining, becoming part of our private Discord, joining up our mini review, or just supporting from the shadows like a clandestine organization, links are in the description. Yep, smells like streaking grime. Murray is not actually here today while I film the outro to this video and say thank you all for watching. 
think you're doing a great job. This is super cool. These thick, huge bear cavalry charging at your enemies across the table would be a fun sight to behold. Thank you all for watching. Again, uh, if you're interested in the Apex Maker, check out in the description, but also our Kickstarter, which is a big one, sign up so you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed this content, I guess like and subscribe is what we usually say. Uh, but as I'm alone sitting here, no one else in the room, not even a camera person, uh, I just say bye. Thanks for watching. Just make it a quick one. Get out of here. Go. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. All right. Happy video. Bye. Thank you. Bye.